Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today we are going to have our capstone lesson of ionic compounds and that's naming acids. Sort of the final boss, I guess, of these last couple lessons because what we're going to do is we're going to take everything we learned about ionic compounds and then apply them to acids. And this is where the first year chemistry student makes most of their mistakes in naming. And so let's take a look at what makes acids different with regards to naming and a little bit about their properties so you get a little bit of background on why we're talking like this. And so as we put off the ionic rules, what makes it different is that the cation in this case is always going to be H plus, a hydrogen cation. Uh, and, you, and this makes it very easy to identify because just look for compounds that begin with H that aren't things like water or hydrogen peroxide. Uh, most of the time if it begins with an H it's, it's just their way of saying hey we're dealing with an acid. And so in this case, question bear would be a hydrogen cation. Uh, but what we often have to assume when we have an acid is that it's in water. Uh, if, if one of these compounds isn't in water, then it's named either ionically or covalently. It's not named as an acid. Um, now, there are qualifiers that we can put after the names of compounds to uh, show this. Uh, but until we get to that, let's just assume that all of these compounds are in water and we'll name them as uh, you would an acid. All right, and, and, and unless someone says otherwise, I think, I think you should go with that. And so what happens is when you put one of these compounds in water, uh, the hydrogen ions will often dissociate or separate from the anion. And that's what really makes an acid an acid. And so there are two main types of acids out there. There are acids that contain oxygen in the anions and acids that do not contain oxygen in the anions. And these can be uh, both um, monatomic and polyatomic anions, and we'll show you how to deal with all of these. Now again, if you're, if you're not confident about your basic ionic compound naming skills, I would pause this video right now and go back and refresh, especially on polyatomic naming, uh, because uh, you have to really have that mastered to do this correctly. So let's start with the acids that do not contain oxygen. They're not necessarily uh, easier than, than the ones that do, they're just different. Uh, but, but nonetheless, very straightforward. If your anion does not contain oxygen, um, then it gets a very uh, a clean naming system. You always throw the prefix hydro on it, and you always uh, swap out the suffix for ic acid. And so let's start with one of the big classics, and that's HCl. Okay, the anion there is chloride. Um, uh, but as an acid, uh, since there's no oxygen in this compound, then it would get the name hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid. So that's where that classic name came from. Even one a little less common would be when hydrogen sulfide, the, the smell of rotten eggs, if that stuff dissolves in water, uh, it will become hydrosulfuric acid. I mean, what you'll notice is that uh, the number of hydrogens in the compound is determined the same way that you would determine the number of any cations. Uh, you have to balance out the charge. And so uh, chlorides have a minus one charge, so you need one hydrogen. Sulfides have a minus two charge, so you're gonna need two hydrogens. And so uh, no one will ever tell you how many hydrogens are in an acid because you have the means to determine it yourself by knowing the charge of the anion involved. Now occasionally you will run into a polyatomic uh, that doesn't contain oxygen. And in that case, it would also get named this way too. For example, cyanide is CN. That's a polyatomic that doesn't contain oxygen, and so it would get named hydrocyanic acid. Um, so you will run into these occasionally. So don't assume that every polyatomic is going to be named uh, the same way. If it doesn't contain oxygen, it gets the prefix hydro. Now, if your acids do contain oxygen, then you're dealing with some kind of polyatomic. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the endings uh, eight and eight, and we're going to swap those out for endings you've seen before based on multiple charge cations, ic and us. All right, and so polyatomics that contain eight get changed to ic acid. Everything else stays the same. And so, for instance, the classic acid sulfuric acid comes from the polyatomic sulfate. And so what we're going to do there is take off the ending eight and swap it out with ic acid. Now, yes, you got to tweak it a little bit to get the name to work out correctly, but that's how it works. And since sulfate has a negative two charge, we needed two hydrogens there. All right. Now, a lot of, a lot of the ways people remember this is to think that I ate something icky. And that way you'll remember that eight goes with ick. And once you remember that eight goes with ick, then it gets stuck with us. Um, I don't necessarily have a good mnemonic device for that, a mnemonic device for that. But yeah, I'm sure you can figure something out. And so let's take, instead of sulfate, let's take sulfite. 
and we'll swap and we'll change that to sulfurous acid. Notice there's no hydro on any of these because uh, these contain oxygen. Sulfite still has the same negative two charge, so it still gets two hydrogens. Now, if there's a poly, if the polyatomic has a prefix, those prefixes uh, come along. So don't don't get rid of those. So for example, hypochlorite, if it became an acid, would become hypochlorous acid. We would add on the one hydrogen that's needed, but the hypo will stay. And again, if you don't have your polyatomic rules down, then adding this extra layer of rules on top of that is going to really mess you up. And that's it. That's really the naming uh, rules for acids. Um, something that's worth focusing and taking your time on. Uh, but really, it's not all that difficult. It's not that many new rules based off ionic compounds. And so what I did do here is I gave you a bunch of iodide, iodide uh, compounds here that you can name as acids. Um, hydroiodic acid. Um, we'll start with, obviously we'll pause for a second though and we'll give you a chance to work through all these. Okay, welcome back. All right, so hydroiodic acid, uh, that is a non-oxygen containing and the only one that I know is that is iodide. Okay, and so iodide's got a negative one charge, so that would become HI and that's hydroiodic acid. But iodic acid, on the other hand, has to come from some polyatomic containing oxygen. It came from eight, so iodate. So the iodate polyatomic, and this is again a good time to have your common ion chart out for polyatomics, uh, is IO3 minus. And so I would need one hydrogen to balance that out. And so that would be HIO3. Iodous acid, again, us comes from it. And so this would so that would be uh, the iodite polyatomic, which would be IO2. And so I would add on one hydrogen there at the beginning of that to balance that out. Notice that again, remember that when we scale up and down inside polyatomics, the charge doesn't change. Per iodic acid would be one more oxygen than iodic acid because it just like uh, per iodate would have one more oxygen than iodate. All right, so we have one extra oxygen there. And then hypoiodous acid would, would be the same as hypoiodite. Uh, uh, again, two oxygens less than eight. And so it would be HIO. Now again, do these acids all really exist? I'm not sure. But we can still, who cares, we can, we can practice naming any, anything as an acid just to practice these naming skills. And so remember that in, all, in each of these cases, these all only had one hydrogen because all the anions only had uh, a negative one charge. But as the charge changes, then the number of hydrogens would change too. So, um, so here we go, here's some, uh, uh, some other acids to name the other way. Uh, I'll pause and let you name those. All right, welcome back. H2SO4, now remember, we don't have to ever worry about uh, the number of hydrogens in an acid. Just focus on the anion. SO4, uh, again, we've already said is sulfate, so this would become sulfuric acid. Uh, Cl minus, we already said it was chloride, so this would be hydrochloric acid. NO3 is nitrate, and so this would become nitric acid. It becomes ic. Uh, that's phosphate over there, and so that would become phosphoric acid. Again, a little bit of a name tweak there. And then this last one looks tough, but it's just acetate, so that would become acetic acid. And that's why they separated out the hydrogen there, is they want to give you a hint that that's an acid. Now, the reason we, we talked about some of these, again, even though we, we were used earlier, is the fact that these are common acids uh, that you really want to commit to memory. These are acids that you should be able to write down even without access to a common ion chart. Um, commit these to memory because you'll see these a lot. But there's plenty of other examples to use. And so uh, what I would recommend you do if you want to get really good at naming acids is just find any anion you can and turn it into an acid. Who cares if it exists or not in nature? Uh, the more you practice this, the stronger your skills will get. Um, so anyway, so we spent a lot of time working on just acids today. I hope that uh, our, our, our uh, taking our time on this uh, served you well. Um, hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and uh, have a great day. And uh, next time, by the way, when you come back, uh, we'll, we'll get into covalent.